within IVI? Um, well, one of the common misconceptions is that uh, what IVI is doing is trying to build new value assessments or reinvent the wheel on value frameworks. And IVI is an organization that's been around since 2016, and we're a research-based organization. And what we're trying to do is focus on uh, developing new prototype models, economic models, and methods that better capture especially patient preference and patient heterogeneity in, um, in research about effectiveness and cost effectiveness of therapies. Um, so for, from our standpoint, value assessment looks like uh, a process that's multi-stakeholder that involves the inputs from a variety of perspectives. Uh, most importantly, from the patient perspective, we think that there's a real need to build uh, the scientific base and the methods for how do we incorporate patient factors of value at the front end of um, economic modeling. And uh, there, it's kind of a new field or a new um, horizon for value assessment, but we think that by uh, improving the methods and improving the science that we can uh, ensure that value assessment uh, is more credible and more relevant. I think that's the most important aspect, more relevant to real decisions that affect real patients. Um, and most patients don't look like a randomized control trial. We know this, it's acknowledged as one of the biggest weaknesses in the clinical data that we have. And that doesn't mean we should throw it out, it just means that w how do we add the and? How do we augment our methods so that we can see on a level playing field what the perspectives of patients are uh, in their experience with disease. Uh, for IVI, I mean, I think one of our, um, our most important uh, mission aspects of our mission is to engage patients at the front end. And uh, so that takes shape in a number of ways. We want to involve uh, patients and patient organizations in our process. We invite them to be members of our uh, nonprofit organization. Um, we want them to engage with us on different research projects. So that might look like um, participating in focus groups or helping us formulate the questions that we're posing to focus groups to really understand patient experience and most importantly to define the factors that patients use within a different uh, specific disease state. How do patients and their family members and their clinicians, how do they approach deciding um, their course of therapy? Uh, what factors do they take into consideration? Is it uh, whether they're able to keep their job, how it impacts their family members, whether it has uh, impact on fatigue, for example, how they receive treatment? Is it uh, something that they're able to do if they travel a lot, for example? Um, so those are all important factors that currently don't have a plug-in if you will, uh, into current cost effectiveness analysis models. And we want to spend time with patients at the front end, kind of getting a sense for what are those important aspects, and then translate that into how do we create models that can accommodate that data? How do we create models that can show when you look at subgroup analysis based on gender or based on severity of disease or based on age, are there differences in response that are important for us to understand when we come up with this grand definition of what is value? Um, I mentioned you know, becoming a member of the organization. We try to make it very accessible to be part of the organization, both to uh, hear from us and engage with us on setting our research priorities, uh, as well as participating in research. So, uh, for example, we partnered with uh, uh, patient groups in the rheumatoid arthritis field to develop our first prototype model, which was in RA. And we did the same um, with uh, lung cancer uh, organizations for our second prototype model, which was on non-small cell lung cancer. So, and we did that research at the front end. It wasn't at the, end, at the back end of the analysis. We really sat down with those groups at the beginning and did the projects in which we tried to define what are the patient factors of value at the very beginning and then use those results to design the model prototype that we, um, that we ended up creating. And so there's an important role for patients to get involved uh, and we 
prioritize doing so early uh, at, at the front end. And the patient groups that do make that effort and collaborate with us can directly see the translation of their time into an actual model that can be used. And, you know, we think the models that what IVI is producing and the models that we're building aren't necessarily intended to be used by patients. And I think often that can seem um, disappointing to patient organizations, and I understand that. I'm not an economist myself, and I, I like the way the IVI models uh, work, but I don't claim to understand all the things that are going on in the background, the math. Um, but I think what we're trying to champion is the notion that the patient perspective has to be built in from the front end. And so we think it's really worthwhile to, to participate with us. Um, and uh, we think that the prototypes we're building, what they're truly intended to do is to improve the process of value assessment. So ultimately, we hope that other value assessors internationally as well as here in the U.S begin to look at our methods and our approach and the models that we're building and incorporate them into what they're doing. And they're able to do so because one of the unique factors about IVI is that everything that we're doing is open source. That means it's freely available. We want to partner with researchers, academics, health plans, HEOR teams within manufacturers, patient organizations that have scientific capacity. It's an all-in proposition, and uh, so I'm kind of personally on a mission to tell that story because uh, it's, a, it's an open season, and I think the only way we're gonna improve the methods is if we collaborate, so, and that starts with patients. You know, patients can be members of IVI de facto. That means we have members who serve on our board of directors, we have a scientific advisory panel that we welcome uh, having patient participation in. We're current, you know, like I said, we're a newer organization. Uh, we achieved 501c3 status in uh, mid-2018, so we're still pretty nascent. Uh, but that's a great ground floor opportunity for other patient organizations that may have early or be just coming onto the scene to get involved with us and help us uh, kind of build that next generation of, of value assessment. Um, so there's, you know, membership and board service. Uh, there's participation in specific research projects. Um, uh, so there's lots of ways to engage, I think, uh, and it really just starts with a conversation and, you know, getting to know the organization and what IVI's objectives are, and then working with patient organizations that are really interested in influencing um, the methods and together designing projects that will have impact. So uh, the best way is to, to either contact me or to go to our website, which is www.innovationandvalue.org. Um, you can see all the models, the prototypes we've put up. You can see some of the research papers that we've put together. Um, and I, I think that's a good place to start the conversation. Um, so anyway, I'm, you know, it's kind of an open call for if you're interested in learning more about IVI. Contact me and we can start a conversation and uh, see where it goes. Yeah, I think that's been an interesting theme of today's meeting um, and, and I know ongoing conversation within the, the National Health Council, which I think is really vital because uh, a lot of patient organizations may not have the infrastructure or the capacity or the scientific expertise and may feel intimidated by the notion of getting involved. And I would say you don't need those things. What you need is um, your expertise in representing or being a patient with lived experience in a specific disease is your number one asset and, you're, and you bring something to the table that nobody else can. They might have degrees in economics or whatever, but the true expert is the patient in the room. And so I think bringing the confidence that your lived experience and your, the perspective of patients in your disease community are not only relevant, but important to advocate for and to continue to push for their inclusion uh, in the methods and in the narrative and in the dialogue and in the interpretation of value is fundamentally important. Um, as far as preparatory, I think you know we hear commonly that 
the data is missing. There's not a there's not adequate data about what real world uh, experience looks like, what patient factors are important um, to that disease community, and I think so. Anything that you or your organization can do to stimulate collecting that kind of data is vital. Um, that is often a challenge for patient organizations who don't have the resources to do so, but I would say find, find your friends, talk with other patient groups that do have those kinds of structures to figure out how to you know, learn from their lessons. Um, uh, but don't give up and uh, do everything you can to kind of lean in and say our voice matters and, um, and we want to contribute the data and the experience that we have to the conversation about value and let others that have expertise and frankly resources to do so become your partners and your allies to bring that forward. Because uh, until you step up and say, we need to be included, nobody, oftentimes you're not gonna get approached or you're not gonna get asked. And uh, I, I think as, as a former patient advocate myself, uh, you know, the first step is to raise your hand and say, I'm here and I'm ready to, to work.